Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Pete Batio. Um, I have the, the privilege of uh, leading the OECD's work on, uh, on consumption taxes, focusing mainly on value added uh, taxes. And I am delighted to welcome you to, uh, to this session of our Tax and Development Days on VAT and e-commerce. Uh, we will be updating you on our work with uh, developing economies to collect VAT on e-commerce. Uh, we'll have a look at what uh, has been achieved in the last year, uh, and we'll finish with some insights into uh, into what comes next. Um, I will be joined today by a panel of distinguished colleagues uh, from our partner organizations um, and tax authorities uh, who will share their perspectives, uh, and I will introduce them to you as, as we progress uh, through the session. Um, this um, overview that you will now see on your screen, if we can go to the next, uh, if we can go to the next slide, I should have given the sign. Sorry, <laughs> this overview of the OCD's work on on consumption taxes um, probably looks familiar to, uh, to 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 some of you. Um, it illustrates how how inclusiveness and and consensus are built into the organization uh, of this work, uh, along with a focus on knowledge sharing and and capacity building. At the core of this work is, is the development of uh, consensus-based solutions uh, to address common challenges in, in VAT policy and administration, as you can see in the, the top right quadrant uh, there on the screen. Um, these solutions are, are, are developed through an inclusive uh, process with, with the active involvement of all interested jurisdictions and organizations, uh, be they OECD members or, or, or non-OECD uh, non countries. Um, now, obviously, the, the consistent and effective implementation uh, of these solutions is what matters uh, most. And, and, and this is supported through a range uh, of capacity building initiatives, which you see outlined on the, the bottom two quadrants uh, on, your, on your screen. Um, th these initiatives include multilateral initiatives, uh, such as e-learning, uh, workshops, training events, uh, and practical toolkits. On the other hand, this is complemented with uh, bilateral capacity building initiatives, which are becoming increasingly uh, sort of the priority focus of our uh, uh, work. And this is um, done primarily through uh, what we call bespoke technical assistance, focusing very much on uh, e-commerce and, and, uh, and digital trade. Now, all this is done uh, in close partnership um, with, with other international organizations and regional organizations. Um, to ensure international consistency and efficiency and and of course to ensure that regional perspectives are duly taken into uh, account um next slide please uh, addressing the vat challenges of e-commerce is at the core of our work it's a core priority of um, of, of of what we uh, do on a daily basis and, and that shouldn't come as a surprise um, as online shopping continues to grow around the world. Uh, Latin America, uh, the Middle East and Africa, uh, along with Central and Eastern Europe, um, are recording particularly strong growth, double digit um, uh, figure growth, as you can see on the left, uh, albeit from, from a, a smaller basis, uh, as you can see on the graph uh, on the right. Um, in each of the regions uh, that you see outlined here on this graph, uh, on this slide, however, you see that the absolute amounts and volumes involved uh, are more than significant enough uh, to warrant attention uh, by tax administrations. If we can go to the next slide, you will see that um, it is important, uh, particularly important to, uh, to notice that e-commerce represents an increasingly important uh, and large share of retail sales uh, in countries worldwide. And, and this is important because retail sales is indeed where governments normally collect uh, their VAT revenues. Now, in, instead of collecting VAT from the traditional brick and mortar stores that are often based within uh, the territory of a jurisdiction, tax authorities now have to collect their VAT revenues from online merchants, uh, which are often based offshore. Now, this can obviously complicate things, uh, can impact and does impact revenues, uh, can distort competition between online and, and uh, online trade and traditional trade, and it can threaten the integrity of tax systems if um, in the absence of appropriate measures. And it is unsurprising that this is this is has this has become an issue of growing concern for developing e economies also. 
as they have typically seen e-commerce accelerate following the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, and as they often depend on VAT as their main source uh, of revenue. In response to these uh, challenges, countries worldwide are taking measures for the collection of VAT on uh, e-commerce, as we see on this uh, slide. And many of those measures, although not all, but most of these measures um, are based on the solutions developed by the OECD and its partners. We are approaching about uh, you know, the, 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 the sort of magic threshold of about 100 countries that have implemented reform based on these solutions, and more are in the pipeline. As you can see on the graph, many, if not most, high-income uh, countries have already taken measures uh, to address the VT challenges of digital trade, and also increasingly middle-income countries. You can see there that low-income countries are lagging uh, for the time being, mainly due to capacity uh, constraints. And this countries, these countries will need to be among the main focal points of our capacity building work in the future. At this point, let me hand over to my dear colleague, Daniel Alvarez, uh, who is a senior public sector specialist at the World Bank uh, Group. Daniel has been our strategic partner for the last two and a half years, almost three years, uh, in our project to develop regional VAT digital toolkits. And we expect these toolkits to become a key instrument for our capacity building efforts in the future. The floor is yours, Daniel. Thank you, Pete, for the invitation and for your nice introduction. It is my pleasure to be here with all of you today. Global challenges require global solutions and with a regional scope. The VAT Digital Toolkit project is a good example of this approach indeed. In a nutshell, the VAT toolkits provide guidance for the implementation of a comprehensive strategy to ensure VAT is effectively collected on e-commerce cross-border transactions. The toolkit set the ground for an effective technical assistance in support of countries for the implementation of this strategy. Today, Three comprehensive VAT digital toolkits reports are available for the regions of the Latin American, the Caribbean, Asian, and Africa. But how, how did we get here? As a, bio, as a way of background, and Pete, you have already referred to some of it, um, I should point out first the long established collaboration between the OECD and the World Bank in support of tax reform, and in particular in the area of international tax. Our institutions have together developed capacity building programs in over 30 developing countries. And part of this success of this partnership is explained by the comprehensiveness of our skill sets, operational tools at country level and global presence. In this context, um, the OECD and the World Bank in partnership with regional partners at the International American Development Bank in the case of Latin America and the Caribbean, the Asian Development Bank in the case of the Asian region and the African Tax Administration Forum in Africa joined forces for the development of regional toolkits to assist countries in addressing the VAT challenges of the digitalization of, an, of this digitalization and e-commerce. This collaborative framework was grounded in three main premises. First, as you said, Pete, uh, VAT is a major source of tax revenue representing on average one quarter of total tax revenue in most developing countries. Therefore, and as you also point out before, securing its integrity and performance in the digital area is critical to enhance their domestic revenue mobilization capacity in face of a rapidly con changing economic environment. Second, and as I referred before, more than ever, global tax challenges demand multilateral cooperation and joint action. As the digital economy rapidly turns into the economy itself, BAT systems need to be collectively adopted to avoid erosion of tax bases and distortions of trade flows, while at the same time ensuring a neutral taxation framework between physical stores and online sellers and between domestic and foreign business. And third, countries across regions are endowed with unique tax institutions in face of the challenges posed by the exponentially growing e-commerce e sector. Not all countries are the same as we know. Tax systems operate in different contexts. 
Therefore, tailor solutions for the design of an effective VAT framework to collect taxes from digital transactions is critically needed now than more than ever in due consideration of a regional unique circumstances. So based on these factors, a collaborative project uh, for the elaboration of the regional VAT digital toolkits it started actually in 2019, at the very beginning, right? After four years of intense work and close collaboration, this project has finally concluded with a joint release yesterday by the OECD, the World Bank, and the TAF of the VAT digital toolkits for the Africa region. We are very proud of this collaborative work and hope it will be helpful for countries in the region to support their tax reforms in this area. My last point, our mission, Pete and colleagues, is not over. Actually, it's only starting. As part of our global mandate to support tax reforms worldwide, the World Bank has been supporting countries from different, different regions to reform their VAT systems, and in some cases to implement strategies to cope up with the challenges of e-commerce through an array of lending and technical assistance programs. In particular, there are several ongoing activities in countries of Latin America and the Caribbean, Africa, and South and East Asia supporting this work through budget support operation, investment lending, and technical assistance. The regional toolkits and the OECD guidelines will continue to be used as technical anchors for this purpose. We very much look forward to keep our country engagement and multilateral co collaboration alive for the years to come. The digital economy is not turning back, so our collection action is needed more than ever on the way forward. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh... Danielle, for that excellent uh, update and for your excellent intervention. And, and let me use this opportunity to wholeheartedly thank you again for, for our excellent cooperation throughout the toolkit uh, project. It, um, um, it's not always, it's been challenging. It's a long, uh, it's been a long ride and it's been a, a challenging uh, project. Um, uh, the, there, have no, there, has, there has not been any blood and tears that I'm aware of, but there has been a lot of sweat. So, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's been uh, it's been heavy lifting, but it has been fun uh, as well. And um, I'm, I'm together with yourself and our partners. Uh, we're we're extremely proud of the uh, of the outcome of uh, of, of this work. Uh, and today is indeed the day of celebration, as we uh, have just launched um, the Africa edition of the toolkit together yesterday, as you uh, indicated, Danielle. Uh, so in partnership with World Bank Group and and ATAF. And I'm therefore delighted uh, to give the floor now to uh, Emeka Kwanko. Uh, Emeka manages the domestic taxes unit uh, of ATAF, and he's thus um, excellently placed to introduce the VAT Digital Toolkit for Africa. Uh, over to you, Emeka. All right. Thank you, Pete. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Great to see you again. Uh, I think, first of all, I would like to send the unreserved apologies of uh, Mary Baini, uh, the Deputy Executive Secretary of ATAF. Uh, she was supposed to be here with us today uh, to, to take on this session, but unfortunately, uh, she had unexpected developments that required her attention, so she couldn't be here. But uh, I, I would try to do justice by representing her. <laughs> um, Pierre, as you said, um, it's been a challenging journey um, trying to get the two kids uh, across the line, but it's also been an interesting one, which we've learned a lot from. Um, but in the first place, we have to look at what are the highlights around the toolkit. Um, the toolkit is basically a practical manual that would help jurisdictions in terms of designing strategy um, to have an effective collection mechanism uh, and compliance system for e-commerce, especially when it comes to cross-border transactions. Um, this toolkit uh, um, is done in a way that um, it's, it's tailored to the African perspective of issues that might be common to the African region. Uh, and to make sure this happens, uh, it went through an extensive consultative process uh, where we engaged many African jurisdictions, um, engaged with the VAT Technical Committee of ATAF, which has um, the presentation of VAT experts from across African countries, uh, an event that had um, countries at different stages of implementation come together to speak to the challenges they're seeing and what the toolkit might need to, to, to cover. But in doing this also, the toolkit made sure that there was consistency. Uh, with international best practice based on the OECD uh, international VAT guideline. So while maintaining consistency, it, it's, it's also specially tailored 
uh, to, 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 the, to the peculiarities um, of, the, of the continent. So with this, um, as Daniel has mentioned, it, it provides a good foundation uh, for the technical work we're doing on the, on the continent in ensuring that while jurisdictions may maintain their sovereign authority, there's consistency in rules which will help with voluntary uh, compliance. And for that, we're very grateful to the OECD and World Bank for, for the opportunity to collaborate, uh, collaborate on this and be able to deliver this. Uh, with that said, uh, we might, we'll take a look at what actually the, the toolkit uh, talks about uh, in, in its different sections. Next slide. So um, the toolkit itself, uh, we have the toolkit and then there's the broker which gives some sort of high level summary. But in the toolkit, you find first of all, the background uh, to VAT challenges, talking about VAT in Africa. Uh, I think Peter and Daniel have mentioned the importance of VAT. Uh, VAT contributes about 30% to total revenue in most African countries on the average, and that is the highest contributor to, 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 to revenue. So this is a very important source of revenue for African countries. But then, uh, the digital economy presents a frontier issue on how do we address this to make sure that, um, first of all, there's a fair competitive environment for both local suppliers within the digital economy and then the brick and mortar uh, operators. Uh, so the toolkit looks at this and looks at various solutions available, but the major focus is on the simplified regime uh, or the, the, the international best practices, again, provided by the international VAT guideline. Uh, it recommends the policy framework into, into, into basic sections, looking at intangibles and services, which most African countries are already starting to adopt uh, in terms of trying to put together regimes for that purpose, and then look at low value goods. Now, while this has not yet been implemented on the continent, the toolkit actually provides a good background and foundation for countries considering that based on experiences around the world and again, international best practice. So it, it speaks on the size and intangibles and then also addresses uh, low value goods. And then we have the implication of the sharing and gig economy, because here you have the situation where while uh, the platform supplying uh, might be non-residents, you have residents who actually provide the services on ground. So again, this presents the business model that presents its own certain specific issues that might need to be looked further into in the design. You have issues around the reporting responsibilities, obligation, the institution, you find what you call deemed uh, supplier uh, rules. So again, the toolkit provides background and information on how to approach and look at the sharing and gig economy and probably the options available uh, to address those issues. And then we get to the administrative and operational implementation of simplified reg registration and collection regime. Uh, this deals most around things like uh, simplified registration, uh, requiring less information, what type of information will be okay, um, what is the business experience, what will be helpful in encouraging businesses to register, and then you come to the filing perspective, what information are necessary or what is the minimum information needed uh, to ensure compliance versus uh, making it burdensome and maybe discouraging voluntary compliance, what is necessary. And then um, making available digital channels or various channels that it makes payments easier. So this part looks at the operational side and administration, what needs to be done, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and what are the options to consider for the future. And then we get to enhancing compliance and enforcement. Uh, this looks at issues around international uh, collaboration, um, exchange of information. How do we now do this and focus on how best use it for VAT purposes? especially being that this has a lot to do with cross-border supplies. Um, how do you get international cooperation on, on, on making sure that there's enforcement uh, for compliance? And this is very important for developing countries, considering again, uh, where you don't have the authority or power to enforce uh, on these entities, you need help with the, with the countries where they are either residents or who have the ability to enforce. You need to get more information to even understand the type of transactions, the value or what they are doing within the jurisdiction. So this looks at that and looks at the various framework available for exchange of information and other enforcement or collaborations or ways and third party data that could be used internally within the country to address this. So that, that, that it also addresses those issues. And then finally, you have a checklist. No matter the stage or the phase where you are within the jurisdiction and implementation, the checklist allows you to check where you are or what needs to be done or the things that are necessary for you to have an effective regime. Uh, so it's a checklist that allows you to figure out where you are, what you might need to reform or what you might have to relook at uh, to change to make sure the system is quite effective. And I think this generally describes what you'll find in the toolkits, but it's in more details with um, relevant country examples, experiences of what has been done across jurisdictions within and outside Africa. Uh, next slide. And um, just like Piet mentioned, and Daniel also spoke about the technical assistance. While we've been working on the, the toolkits, unfortunately, countries are moving ahead to implement these regimes. 
uh, although it's at a nascent stage, it's still a frontier issue. Uh, most countries are at the beginning phase of implementation, uh, but there's the pressure uh, for the revenue from, from, from this. So countries are moving towards implementation. So we found where we've had to provide technical assistance and support to countries, notwithstanding the stage, uh, whether the legislation has been done, uh, those that are still forming the legislation, countries are various stages. And currently, uh, from the ATAF side, we've been able to work with about 10 countries and continuously working with 10 countries to see how best uh, to help them um, implement a system that is quite effective and consistent with the best practice and global practice. Um, sometimes it's a tough journey, but it's something um, you have to move depending, notwithstanding where the stage of implementation is. And what the toolkit has done, even in the process of developing the toolkit, is that through the technical assistance, we've been able to get um, insight of what needs to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Um, can, may I ask you to please slow down so the interpreters can keep up? <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, I'm trying to keep to the time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. So um, with the technical assistance, we've also been able to, to, to troubleshoot and find out what are the issues that it needed to be included in the toolkit, the issues that needed to be addressed in the toolkit. So it's also been a huge source of information uh, for the toolkit process. But on the other side also, the process of developing the toolkit has also helped in engaging with those countries because most of the things and some of the things that we engage with these countries are on, uh, on are consistent with what you'd find in the toolkit or the international VAT guideline. So while being a resource for delivery of this technical assistance, the technical has also uh, created a channel for feedback into the toolkit on what is required or what is necessary or what is needed um, by the jurisdictions. And um, and one example in this process is also the consultation with the business community. A lot of that has happened over the process of developing the toolkit, focused on the toolkit, but also focused on specific countries who are implementing regimes. And ATAF and the OECD has been able to coordinate and engage with the BIAC, um, the business at OECD community, to engage with countries um, to discuss the plans, uh, the rules, or the, what is to be implemented, and find where there could be refinements or collaboration. But these are all geared towards ensuring that it's primarily voluntary compliance um, for most of the regimes. Um, and also we've been able to, I mean, while working with countries specific issues, there's been a lot of capacity building to also make sure that the revenue officials are aware of the issues and what needs to be done, uh, both on the policy and administration side. Uh, and so far we've been able to engage with over 500 revenue officials across 35 jurisdictions in all forms, uh, different forms of capacity building engagements. Uh, this go from country specific trainings uh, for officials uh, to multilateral where you have um, training events within ATA for, for countries to participate in. And with the toolkit being launched, um, our hope is that with the toolkit, we're able to continue the engagement and the work with the countries. Uh, again, first, to make sure that is um, consistent uh, with global best practice. Uh, second, that is primarily based on voluntary compliance, that the systems are designed in a way that it's easier to comply. And three, uh, to promote international collaboration for enforcement um, of compliance. And this is a very critical issue for most countries from the feedback we've gotten. But you know, it's um, a very great development with the, um, with the toolkit, and we're looking forward to more collaborations. Um, and we appreciate the work so far with the OECD and, and, and World Bank on this project, really have further collaborations uh, with the OECD in respect of VAT. Thank you, Pete. Thanks so much, Mika. Uh, you've done a fantastic job in covering not just the toolkit, but also the the, the process leading up to the, to the result and even looking ahead. So uh, really well done. Uh, even the sun is breaking through the clouds here uh, to show, which, uh, show its appreciation. And it, it hasn't break, broken through the clouds here since forever in Paris. So. Uh, uh, well done, uh, great work. Um, uh, probably I can also use this um, th this opportunity perhaps to uh, wholeheartedly thank also our uh, colleagues from the IBFD uh, who have worked together with with us uh, and with our partners uh, uh, to uh, to carry out research on VAT regimes in, in Africa. Uh, and a, 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 specific, a, specific, a special thanks to, um, to Fabiola Amakundia of the IBFD uh, and John Mpoa from uh, the Center for Studies in African Taxation, CSAT, at, uh, at IBFD. Uh, thanks so much uh, for your invaluable uh, support. We probably wouldn't have managed to uh, 
to get through all the uh, the in-depth research on the the large variety of VAT systems in Africa without your uh, without your assistant uh, assistance. And uh, finally, thanks again to ATA for the fantastic journey together. It's been uh, uh, it's been fascinating. It's been uh, great fun uh, working together on this project, and we very much look forward to continuing our uh, our cooperation going forward. Um, Without any further ado, let's look at what uh, what comes next. Uh, Emek already hinted at it, and also uh, Danielle, that um, the uh, the toolkits are not an end in themselves. They're um, uh, they're aimed at uh, supporting technical assistance, um, working uh, effectively together with developing economies to uh, assist them in uh, implementing reform uh, directed uh, VAT reform directed at uh, at e-commerce. Um, and we broadly, this slide sort of uh, outlines the, the OECD's approach to technical assistance in, in the area of VAT and e-commerce. Uh, we broadly distinguish three levels of technical assistance depending on, on its scope uh, and intensity. Um, the tier one um, level of, of technical assistance covers our multi multilateral capacity building activities. So these consist essentially of workshops, training events, uh, that may be dedicated to specific aspects of uh, VAT policy and administration, or they may be directed at spe specific regions uh, or at, uh, at specific maturity levels. Uh, we held around 20 events in, in 2022, reaching about um, 180 individual countries, uh, and those uh, activities will uh, obviously continue in, uh, in 2023. The tier two and three uh, and tier three level of support uh, consists of uh, bespoke bilateral technical uh, assistance. Uh, tier two provides assistance on distinct components of VAT reform directed at digital trade, um, often the legal design of reform and, and administrative guidance. So specific components of reform, whereas tier three refers to the most intense type uh, of support, um, whereby end to end assistance uh, is provided on all aspects of VAT reform uh, on a project basis. Uh, and this includes, uh, or this can include the policy design, so the policy decisions, uh, the legal design, the administrative uh, implementation, systems requirements, IT design, enforcement uh, strategies, um, uh, you name it. And a prime example uh, of tier three uh, assistance is that of Egypt. Uh, Egypt is one of the largest uh, e-commerce markets in, in the MENA region, and uh, the reform in Egypt sort of served as a pilot uh, for our uh, Tier 3 level uh, assistance. And I'm therefore honored uh, to be joined by His Excellency Rami Mohammed, uh, Dep Deputy Minister of Finance and Head of the Tax Policy Unit of uh, the Ministry of Finance of Egypt. Uh, the Deputy Minister will share Egypt's uh, experience with its VAT reform targeted at e-commerce and with the reform path that we walked together with the government of Egypt. The floor is uh, yours, Serban. Uh, thank you, uh, Pete, uh, for, for, for the introduction. Uh, and uh, yes, it's, I think it would be very useful to share Egypt's experience with, uh, with the e-commerce and with the cooperation with the OECD team. Uh, because I think it's a very good example for everyone to follow. Just a little bit of background. Our journey started uh, back in 2019 uh, when we decided to implement the VAT and e-commerce. And the question at that time was like, from where we should start from amending our uh, VAT law or just legislations, I mean, executive legislations, or just um, some amendments in our technology system. So how it should work. At that time, when we reached out to the OECD asking for, for a technical assistant, and it, it, it was the point from where we started. Uh, uh, together, jointly with the OECD, we, we kept moving in, in drafting uh, the amendments required in the VAT uh, legislations, uh, provide, going through uh, the interactive dialogues, uh, going through public consultations, uh, with, uh, with the community, with the platforms. Uh, the next step was also with the executive regulation uh, to how to implement and again going through all the required steps and the, uh, the public consultations. And finally, it's the guidelines 
for for the for the e-commerce which is almost there and we are uh, now very close to be live which is expected to be by june uh, this june uh, hopefully everything will be live and we will start collecting uh, and grabbing the fruits of, of, of these efforts. In this, I would like to, to give a very good example about the cooperation that took place with the OECD, because I would like to name it a golden standard. Uh, I'm sorry. I would like to name it a golden star, standard technical assistant, because what, they, what we experienced from the, the VAT team uh, was really, really, uh, the perfect or the ideal form of technical standard. It was not just about a capacity building in its normal meaning, uh, that just they transfer knowledge to the team and train the team, but the capacity building started from the first moment the team get engaged. They was We felt like in the tax policy department, like we get additional colleagues who are working with us. They were working like in a, in, in a very, cooperative way in which just we we discuss the topic, then tasks are allocated across our team and the, their team. Then after that, joint meetings, then we agree the next step and keep moving this way, which give us the feeling that our capacity increased from the first moment they joined us. They were, it was not about just sending some reports, describing what should happen and just our team need to go and find his way with it but it was like one team working in just one room together, even if it's virtually, but we are working all of us in, in, in one room. This type of technical assistant, I think this is what especially developing country, countries need. Uh, the real capacity building that started from the first moment, that it's not about just giving some training and some reports and so transferring some, some knowledge and just leave it there but it's about getting the experts to be sitting in the same room supporting. This is the right way of transferring the experience and, and, and the, the knowledge. This was one of the unique technical assistance that I received uh, actually during my life in, in, in the Ministry of Finance. And from my side, I named it a golden standard technical assistant. And Every time I'm seeking technical assistance from anywhere, just I give this as one of the typical examples for how the technical assistant should look like. So uh, just very briefly, this is our experience. And we are just like three months away from being live and everything is going the right way. And I would just deliver a big thank you for, for the team, especially Thomas, Hannah, uh, May, and of course, you beat in leading this team so thank you very much. It went very smooth and it was very successful. And we are still like looking forward for more for your side as usual. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, uh, Rami. You actually made me blush, and I think uh, the same goes for uh, uh, for the, the other the other team members uh, here. What I I, I might perhaps um, call out a bit here in in, in our experience with uh, with Egypt. Uh, that may also be of interest to um, uh, to some of the, the the participants in today's uh, session is that um, we started very early on engaging with um, with uh, the Egyptian government at at ministerial level. Um, so, uh, as you might recall, and I'm not probably sharing any secrets here, um, that we had um, a number of very helpful and interesting discussions at political level. Um, were needed to explain to political decision makers what uh, the impact of, of the reform uh, might be, how it might impact um, consumers, um, how it might impact um, e-commerce uh, e commerce activity as such. Um, we sort of worked uh, with, with the political um, level to, uh, with political decision makers on, um, you know, uh, how non-resident uh, offshore uh, platforms and offshore uh, vendors, how they are um, uh, behaving in a compliance uh, environment, um, uh, indeed showing how um, uh, levels of compliance are particularly high when uh, reform is implemented that is in line with OCD standards. So in a nutshell, 
uh, it has been quite interesting, an interesting experience for ourselves, but I think perhaps also helpful uh, for Egypt, and it might also be helpful for other countries that um, we are also happy to assist if needed, and if there is uh, an, an, an interest for that, um, in, in shaping policy decisions. So it's not just about the implementation and the technicality of the implementation, but it's also about assisting in policy uh, decision making, which might often be uh, be be sensitive. Uh, political economy or VAT reform is always complicated, so um, we're always happy to uh, to support their uh, to support there as well. Uh, so thanks so much uh, again, um, uh, Rami, uh, for sharing. Alors, your... merci beaucoup, Rami. It's been an enormous, uh, enormously interesting learning experience for us as well. It's been an experience to um, to roll out uh, and to to increase our service levels uh, to to other countries. Um, meanwhile, while Egypt has been working on its reform, uh, Thailand, another part of the world, has introduced uh, its VAT regime directed at e-services in the second half of uh, 2021, and and we have the great pleasure. Uh, to assist our Thai uh, colleagues uh, in mainly in reviewing the supporting legislation, also in providing some technical uh, backgrounds as and when uh, needed uh, to support this reform. Uh, and I'm delighted to, uh, to now give the floor to uh, Ms. Sawalak uh, Bunayem, uh, who's a tax economist in the revenue department in, in Thailand, um, who will update us on the results of, of Thailand's reform. And I'm um, uh, very grateful uh, also for uh, for Soavalak uh, to to join us despite uh, the time difference, um, and I'm looking forward to hearing your updates, uh, Soavalak. The floor is all yours. Hi, Fiat. Um, thanks very much for having me here today. Um, I'm very happy to um, sharing um, our experience on the implementation of uh, VAT on cross-border electric services, or we can call the VAT on uh, e-services in Thailand. So as you said, like um, I have a little bit number to update that um, we start using the new scheme on the 1st of September, 2021. So now it's over 15 months. We have um, 145 um, non-resident company register the VAT in Thailand. So the revenue generated from this new scheme amount to around 8.9 billion Thai baht or approximately 267 million US dollar, quite a lot. So before we launch um, this uh, regime or this reform, uh, we learn or we have done so many talks. The first one we learned by ourselves, as you can see from on the right of uh, hand side of your screen, uh, because we start learning um, this reform in 2017. So we follow the OECD guideline and we follow these two, two kits. So the first one, OECD International VAT GST guideline, which is published um, in 2015. And the second one, OECD mechanism for the e effective collection of VAT GST, which is published uh, in 2017, but I believe that now you have the update version for um, Asia Pacific and also for other uh, regional as well. I think it's very useful for developing countries that can follow the OECD guideline, but definitely this guideline is quite broad scope. So in Thailand, we had, when we develop or we reform this scheme, we found some specific kits or we have some unclear about the definition of e-services. So we asked the corporation or asked the assistant from the OECD. And then finally, we have the officially bilateral meeting between uh, Revenue Department of Thailand and OECD. And finally, we get like a soft solution for the specific case and also clear information for the definition of um, e-services or some definition that we are unclear is make us clearer. And I would like to say that there is two key success for this reform. The first one, how to make the system um, for um, VAT registration and tax collection on e-service, very, very simplified because um, your taxpayer not submit or not pay VAT only 
for your jurisdiction, but they also have to pay or submit the VAT return other jurisdiction as well. So Thailand, we ask the corporation and we work together with the taxpayer. We ask them like how the system of other country and what kind of information that they need to feel in the system. So we want to be like um, international standard, don't want to make any Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but you're actually muted, so we didn't hear like the last thirty, like the last twenty seconds or so. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Okay, I will back a little bit. Um, so, uh, two key success. The first one is from the simplify the VAT registration or the system for paying VAT. Uh, we ask. Uh, we work together with the taxpayer. So we ask them like how the system of other country, what kind of information that they have to feel in the system because uh, Thailand want to have the like the same standard at, as other country as well and don't want to have like tax burden or complex for the taxpayer because we want to encourage them to register with us, right? And then the second one is how to make um, uh, your um taxpayer or or the non -re non resident uh company register with you how could they know that you launched the new scheme so in thailand we ask the cooperation from the three sector the first one through the um public sector that they locate they have the office that locate abroad for example uh ministry of foreign affairs because they're going to have the embassy around the world and the second one ministry of um commerce and also the last one for the board of investment because these three they definitely have the office abroad and definitely all these non-resident company they locate in other country right so we need um uh, some people that help us to advertise announce that we launched the new scheme and the second one is through the private sector through the um chamber of commerce or federation of thai industry let them know that okay um thailand gonna launch the new scheme and please let your partnership know that okay we're gonna launch the new scheme and encourage them to uh, register with us and the last one very important um to the non um uh resident company if they have the a subsidiary in Thailand. So we contact them through the subsidiary, but if they don't have any subsidiary in Thailand, so we email directly to them and let them know that, okay, on the 1st of September, 2021, we're gonna launch this scheme and we realize that your company kind of in scope of this scheme. So please um, uh, register with us. Yeah, so this is the two key success that I would recommend to other developing country could um, uh, try to make it simplify and effective communication. And over the last, um, over the past 15 months, the problem that we found because we want to make is simplify, right? So we lack of information in terms of auditing. So now we are unsure that the taxpayer pay the tax at the amount, right amount of money. Is it correct or is it not? And we don't know how, like, how could we check because we lack of information. And the second one, we got some company that they claim that their customer, they change from non-VAT trend customer to VAT trend. And now that company, the VAT pet to the Thai tax authority has been declined over a few months. So it would be great if OECD could have some um, guideline or some um, VAT on um, enforcement on uh, electronic services. Yeah, that's all for Thailand. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, So Walak, for your uh, really interesting insights. Um, let me first congratulate you and your colleagues on the success of, of this reform. It's, um, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, the Thai reform on e-services is, is one of the, the best practice examples, of certainly good practice examples world, uh, worldwide. And uh, we were already, together with our partners in the, the APAC toolkit, 
sort of GT digital toolkit for the APAC region, um, we were already um, fortunate to uh, to sort of include the lessons learned from uh, the Thai implementation uh, to include those in the in the toolkit, uh, so that these can be shared with uh, with countries. Um, not just within the APAC region, but but worldwide, because we also included them in the in the Africa toolkit. So, first of all, um, uh, congratulations. Then, second, uh, thanks for sharing your experience, not just today, but also already in the preparation of uh, of two of the of of uh, of the toolkits. Uh, and let me also call out the uh, the importance of the uh, the revenues uh, that you have uh, been able to collect. Uh, as such, uh, uh, VAT reform directed at e-commerce is, is significant. It, it, it requires quite a bit of work, but compared to some other reforms, it's relatively it's a relatively low-hanging fruit. So it's it's a reform that can be implemented with relatively limited investments. And the return on investment as as those figures uh, show here is um is is obvious. It also shows uh, the, the level uh, of compliance um the, the positive level of compliance and the positive revenue results um that regimes uh, are able to generate when they are uh, closely aligned with uh, the standards and solutions that have been uh, uh, developed at international level I, I won't just call them OECD standards um, as they are standards that have actually been developed through a very inclusive framework so that the OECD has played a role in, in creating those standards but they're actually international they're global standards and um we have seen that countries that implement reform that is closely aligned with those standards has um, has achieved uh, enormously uh, positive and, and impressive results, and, and Thailand is certainly a prime example of that. So thanks again, uh, Sawalak. Also thanks for pointing out the need for uh, work to support uh, countries' um, enforcement um, enforcement uh, capacity. And we did not plant this remark. So uh, this this uh, pr this remark. Uh, uh, from so like comes at at exactly the right uh, time and it's a good transition to uh, to our next slide namely to uh, uh, to highlight uh, some um, of our or one of the priorities for our um, our current work program and for our future work uh, program which is indeed to um, assist tax authorities in ensuring compliance with VAT rules directed at e-commerce we've in, we've invested quite a bit of time and effort into developing um uh, standards and solutions uh, that are efficient and effective for the collection of vat um on, on e-commerce activity um always with a view to uh, making things easy to comply and difficult not to um so that has been a focus for a very long time of our work the current focus is on helping countries to implement uh, those solutions but increasingly we also need to assist countries in ensuring compliance measuring levels of compliance um, in, in implementing audit strategies, as Soalak pointed out, um, and also to, to tackle VAT fraud and non-compliance in, in, in digital trade. Um, digital trade is an, is an area of, it, of economic uh, activity like, like any other one, and in any uh, area of, econom uh, of economic activities, there are always those that um, do not comply willingly or, or uh, Sort of unwillingly uh, due to uh, capacity uh, issues. Now, the work that uh, the OECD is developing already in this space uh, includes the sharing of experience uh, and intelligence on risk patterns. So, what are the key risk patterns that are being observed in uh, in the application of VT to uh, to digital trade? Um, looking at detection strategies, the importance of data in that uh, uh, context to look at proportionate and efficient uh, data collection and data reporting uh, requirements. Again, focusing on uh, efficiency, on proportionality, um, and looking, on uh, looking at treatment uh, strategies. And this can also include opportunities to strengthen the exchange of information and other types of administrative, administrative cooperation in the area of VAT. As you know, the past has uh, focused very much uh, on exchange of information, administrative cooperation in uh, the area of income taxes. Um, whereas certainly outside the EU, um, the uh, the common practice, I would say, in, uh, in, in the exchange of information and administrative cooperation in the VAT space 
um, has been sort of less developed. Uh, so we will be looking at uh, enhancing a country's use of the existing legal basis uh, for the exchange of information and administrative cooperation uh, in the area of the VAT. So not reinventing wheels or, or uh, reinventing or inventing anything um, uh, spectacular in the VAT space, but just looking at the opportunities that countries already have to cooperate uh, in the area of uh, VAT, um, in, in the area of uh, tackling VAT fraud and non-compliance, and just make sure that countries are able to use those uh, opportunities. Uh, the outcome of this work will and is already is already being gradually embedded um, in our technical assistance offering to uh, to developing countries, and uh, we are eager to uh, to reconnect and to continue work with uh, Thailand to look at some of the issues that Thailand is um, is witnessing, as as so Alec just uh, just pointed out. In this context, uh, we also strongly welcome the addition. Uh, of a VT audit uh, module to the program of the Tax Inspectors Without Borders uh, initiative. Uh, I'm delighted to give the floor to my colleague uh, Rusudan Kemularia, who is heading the TIWB Secretariat, to personally break this great news to, uh, to you all. Uh, Rusudan, I think you're joining us from Georgia. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pete. We just launched the program on the uh, Pillar 2 practical implementation of the uh, global minimum tax in Georgia. So, and I'm just coming from the, uh, you know, the, the last session. And thank you very much for inviting uh, for, uh, for this session. I think uh, uh, it's great to hear uh, the, the progress in this uh, uh, area and uh, how countries benefiting. So I will be very brief. Uh, so um, I think you must already, uh, you know, hear uh, about the TIWB yesterday because we had a uh, dedicated session uh, on the TIWB uh, very briefly. You know that the Tax Inspectors Without Borders is a joint initiative of the uh, UNDP and OECD uh, that embeds uh, tax experts in developing countries, tax administrations, uh, to provide a practical hands-on assistance on a real audit cases and related international tax issues. So it's a quite a niche uh, assistance uh, and uh, uh, we uh, have expanded it. And we started with the, maybe I have to mention this, with the audit, with the transfer pricing audits in 2015. And I think uh, now the TIWB spent 56 jurisdictions with 55 um, current and 58 completed programs. So uh, it's quite successful. Countries are enormously benefiting from the TIWB uh, niche assistance uh, because it's quite, yeah, I would say uh, demand-driven and practical hands-on assistance. We are using the learning by doing approach while uh, providing, uh, you know, the TIWB programs. And um, so I will not talk about the other areas. I mainly will focus on the uh, expansion of the TIWB, on the auditing of the VAT, on the digital trade. Yeah, so, and uh, it's indeed a great news and I think a huge potential for developing countries to benefit uh, from this type of assistance in this field. Uh, next slide, please. But before uh, this, maybe I just also um, uh, um, uh, announce the figures um, from, uh, you know, the uh, we just released, which is the, uh, the revenue impact through TIWB programs. Uh, we have mobilized uh, uh, over 2 billion USD through TIWB program. So this is the tax collected across the, the world and uh, we heavily focused in Sub-Saharan Africa. However, we provide the assistance to the other uh, um, the regions such as uh, Asia Pacific, Latin America, Caribbean and Eastern Europe. So, um, and also uh, the objective of the TIWB initiative is mainly uh, to build the capacity within the tax administration. So. You saw that our main work on focus was on the direct tax, but the idea now is really to expand and explore this potential and use the key features of the initiative to help countries implement the international standard on VAT and mainly in auditing of the or auditing of the VAT on digital trade uh, in developing countries. So. Um, how it will work, you will send the qualified experts to developing countries tax administrations to sit down together with the local auditors and you know the, the officials to conduct the, the audit uh, on the, the on the uh, VAT uh, on the digital trade. So um, the uh, the program will uh, focus especially on the detection of the the non-compliance and uh, the fraud in the application of the, the digital trade. 
and uh, on the associated activities uh, to enforce the compliance by the non-compliant and fraudulent taxpayers uh, uh, that may um, often have uh, no physical presence in the uh, host administrations. So uh, the idea is to uh, replicate the current model to this uh, new direction, which is the auditing the VAT on the digital trade and using this practical hands-on assistance model uh, to help countries actually practically implement all these international standards. Uh, and how it will work, uh, I, we will start uh, uh, with a few pilot programs, hopefully this year, uh, to see you know, how countries can benefit. Uh, and uh, uh, we will capitalize on the uh, already uh, um, uh, you know, established uh, the uh, structure which we have tested in different directions. And uh, we do hope that uh, it will be a very successful you know, tool and a very useful uh, tool for developing countries as we see that there's a huge potential for developing countries to mobilize the resources when it comes to the VAT on digital trade. And uh, um, so I think um, I will stop here. And uh, if there is a questions uh, later on, so uh, I'm, I'm here, Pete, uh, to step in if it's needed. Uh, um, yeah, over to you. Thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Rusudan, for that uh, very quick but uh, but excellent overview. I've already seen in the chat a couple of questions uh, coming in um, uh, about the interaction uh, between sort of our work, uh, sort of the WP9 work, uh, the work uh, that I described earlier, and the TIWB. Um, and I'm sure you already provided uh, the um, uh, the ideal or the perfect answers to these um, uh, to these questions. And uh, to some extent. Um, it, it, it brings us back to where we started uh, today's uh, session, uh, the, virtuals, the virtual virtuous cycle of, uh, of how we develop uh, our work, um, sort of developing standards, uh, bringing these standards to, to countries through technical assistance and then benefiting from the, the lessons from those technical assistance to feed in again into the development of the standards and uh, et cetera. So um, I anticipate uh, certainly that um, uh, both our initiatives, so our sort of policy uh, initiative on the one hand and the TIWB initiative on the other hand will benefit from each other's learnings, uh, that um, the learnings from uh, the TIWB work as it progresses will uh, certainly um, feed into the discussions um, among countries about what I described earlier and the work on uh, the assistance, um, assisting countries in, in enforcing VAT um in, in in an e-commerce context um so i i do expect um a very active interaction um taking place as we uh, as we progress um at, at the benefit both of tiwb and 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 uh, the, the policy work uh, more broadly um probably Rusadana, i'm not sure whether i can already uh, say this but uh perhaps i might uh, want to encourage countries um that are participating or listening into today's session um to um to express their interest if they have interest um both for technical assistance uh, though you will see a link uh, at the end of the, the today's presentation uh, but both on 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 technical assistance on the one hand and on uh, on the TIWB uh work on the other hand I, I think it's it's probably safe to say that they can already reach out to us and to to start looking uh how we can assist uh, absolutely, Peter. I think this is the uh, excellent point, and uh, of course, uh, welcome to you know submit you know the interest to us. So, yeah. and uh, as you you mentioned, so we are currently you know developing uh, uh, you know uh, um, the TOR, which means that we will have uh, to identify the qualified experts, you know, uh, uh, yeah. from the UNDP roster, and also uh, the partner administration might also participate, as we already have 23 partner administrations supporting the. TIWB. I mean, the uh, infrastructure is in place, uh, so if there will be a request, definitely we'll be more than happy to, to help, uh, you know, countries to implement these standards. And it's a great platform to actually, uh, you know, announce great. this great. for the, uh, the great. you know, Thank you. <laughs> it's, <Peter. laughs> it, it, it's all happening as we speak, so this is really breaking news, but countries can already uh, express their uh, their interest. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, the saying and the cliche is um, time goes fast when you're having fun, and that also applies to this uh, session. Um, as we only have uh, one minute left, I see on the on the clock. Um, so, um, without any further ado, um, 
I think we have some uh, more, yeah, we have some really important information uh, that we want to share before the end of this uh, session. First of all, um, to encourage you all to have a look at the wealth of e-learning modules and, and live training opportunities offered by our global relations colleagues, not only on VAT, of course, but across all taxes and, and, um, and disciplines including um, policy and, and administration. So please do have a look at um, those um, uh, self-paced and life training uh, opportunities. Um, and last but not least, and then I think we can go to the last slide, uh, let me warmly thank um, all our distinguished panelists uh, today uh, to have joined us, and uh, in particular also our partners and donors um, to our tax and development program, without whom none of this would be possible. So, warm and wholehearted thanks uh, from uh, from all of us. Please do not hesitate uh, to reach out to us if you are interested in our technical uh, assistance program or one of our other uh, activities. Um, I think we've now run out of time. So, for now, uh, goodbye. Uh, thanks um, to all of you. Uh, for joining us today. Have a great rest of the day, uh, evening or night. And don't switch off yet because there's still an exciting uh, plenary session to follow in a couple of minutes after this one. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.